Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7 that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. We said grace is very rich. Very rich. Grace is very rich. We can't exhaust God's kindness, God's mercies, God's work of our lives is just amazing. It's beyond imagination what God can do. Amen. And as we understand grace, just try to reduce this one, just this one, just this one a little bit. Uh, as we understand grace, the purpose is to expand it in our own lives. To expand it in our own lives. We said yesterday, grace is God's action towards mankind for the Old Testament word che said, che said or she said, which is when God delivers, that is his grace. When he sets free from affliction, that's God's grace. Praise the Lord. When he provides, that's God's grace. In the New Testament is the word charis, which has a lot to do with favor, the gift that he gives us freely, the gift of salvation. And here the Bible says that not only the grace we received at salvation in verse 5 and 6, but it's also grace that is securing the future. Praise God. By grace you have been saved. And also verse 7, grace which is rich that God shows towards us in the age to come, in the next season. Praise God. And it's, I, I, let's read this other scripture. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. Somebody say grace is rich. In other words, God, what God is able to do is beyond what you can handle, what you can imagine. Do you remember when in Malachi 3, the famous Malachi 3.10, when you give your tithe and pay your tithe, he opens windows of heaven. The Bible says you will not have room, you know, to receive what he pours out when we walk in obedience. Amen. The grace of God is just beyond imagination. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it says, As each one of us has received a gift, what do you do with that gift? Minister. Minister it to one another. How will you minister? As a good steward of the manifold grace of God. The word manifold is very interesting because it's the word various. So the grace of God has various manifestations. Praise God. Grace of God has various manifestations, has many sided manifestations. Glory to God. And so to expand our understanding, uh, I will show you different words that we could use to show the different types, shall I say, of grace. It's the same grace of God, but he operates in many ways. Amen. You see, when Moses wanted to see God's glory in Exodus, the Bible says that in 32, God said, I'll sh you'll see my back, and I'll show you my goodness, and I'll show you my kindness. All these are dimensions of the grace of God. Hallelujah. And this grace, by the way, is a product of process. As you grow with God, as you continue to walk with him, you will experience different aspects of the hand of God upon your life. Yesterday we also said that in uh, Zechariah 12 verse 10, grace also comes in form of a spirit, the spirit of grace. You know, uh, the spirit of grace, the spirit of grace. You know, anything takes the form of a spirit. For instance, in the negative uh, aspect, if you don't forgive and you have this unforgiveness, it fi you find it very difficult to tell people, okay, you are free, you can go, <laughs> you know, and so forth. Later, a spirit of unforgiveness will take over. So now you will be controlled. Uh, you understand? It's not always good to give negative uh, examples 
But how many of you know the Holy Spirit who inspires us to speak? He speaks because he knows who is in the meeting. Tell the neighbor, God knows you are here. Before we are done, he's going to address you. I tell you the truth. Amen. And so, here the scripture says, I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, what? The spirit of grace and supplication. You know, they are praying, offering supplication. They will do it energized by the spirit. Glory to God. And then they will be able to do all the rest of the stuff. You know, grace of God has little many sides. Uh, I told you yesterday, many times when we say, so and so is anointed. Now we permit you to say, so and so has grace. That's the same thing. Amen. So and so has grace. When you hear touch not the anointed, it doesn't mean uh, a specific person. It means Israel. And in the New Testament, everyone who is of God is anointed as grace. And you have the scripture, to each one, as God has given you gift, use it to minister. And yesterday, you know, but to each one of us, Ephesians 4 verse 7, grace has been given according to the measure of Christ's gift. I tell you, nobody here is empty handed. Each one of you has grace. Are we together? It's only that we need to see the different ways in which the grace of God manifests. And it's going to be multiplied in your life. In fact, Peter uh, said, grace and peace be multiplied. Ijumuishwe mara kwa mara mpaka unaweza kuhando as much as you can. Praise the Lord. So, Elisha, do you remember Elisha? Elisha was one of the most anointed men because he carried a, a double, you know, inheritance. He inherited. He was a firstborn. He, was, he became the firstborn son to Elijah, to Elijah. And this man carried a very unique anointing. One time he cleaned up the water system in Jericho. If there's a water system problem in the city, we can clean it up. It's only that there has not been a problem. Or probably we don't know where the source is. Just show us the source. We will go with a bowl of salt. Or if we can't find salt, we'll speak a word to the water. Are we together? You know, there are several things you can do in terms of uh, praying for food. If you, if you don't feel like praying, speak to it. No, no, I'm just showing you. This is another level of grace. Speak to the food. Tell it food, you are now good for my use. It will hear you. Everything has an ear. Instead of always pleading with God to bless the food, why don't you go to the next level? Just speak to the food. Exercise your faith and exercise your grace. Also speak to money. Tell it money, I'm going to town. Follow me. Yeah. It will never happen again. I'm going to town, money. Follow me. Come. This is one of the things Paul forgot to say. You know, signs that follow those who believe. He should have added in Mark, you know, anyway. Let me not make jokes. Elisha was so anointed. And in 2 Kings uh, chapter 13, if you're still there, they haven't moved it. Verse 20, Elisha died. And when he died, something happened. Elisha died and they buried him. And the riding birds from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. Spring of the year, a time like now. This is spring now. So it was as they were burying a man that suddenly they spied a band of raiders and they put the man in the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, something happened. We are struggling with raising the dead. We just need to locate the grave of a man who has grace. That that, that those bones of Elisha were still carriers of grace. I know, you know, in the general uh, Pentecostal understanding, we say was anointed. Now we are taking it to the next level. We are saying it was not just anointing. Are we together? It was grace. There was something resident on that man called Elisha. The question is, the day you leave the earth, 
a, a, will there be something left? Hmm. All right. Let's look at this kind of grace. Let me give you several descriptions and words that could help us in understanding grace. Amen. Go to Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 and 45. How was Kisumu, sir? Welcome. Amen. Pole, I mean, mimi na ungeaka na watu atani kiubiri. Si, ni nemerusi ukufanya hivi. Because you are looking for the verse. Si, mefika sasa. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. That doesn't happen in Kenya. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who despitefully, I mean who, yeah, spitefully use you and persecute you. Look at the words used. Love. Go yeah. Love your enemies. Bless. Do good. Pray. You can't do that if you don't have grace. Those things are not doable. Kenyans ukiwafanyia kitu, watakufanyia kitu. Yeah. There's a group of Kenyans called Kot. Kenyans on Twitter. You dare say something that will deal with you. Uh. Look at the next verse. Anyway, we're just passing through there. But I think this is a very good idea to think about that you can bless those who curse you. You must be a special person. Lele? Somebody anakuja anasimama kwako anaweka hands akimbo. Anas anatoa vitu anatoa vitu anatupa mawe rafu unamwambia Mungu akubariki sana in fact nitakuwa nikikuombea. You must be very special. You have special grace. Hallelujah. Look at verse 45. That you may be sons of your father in heaven. Those who do those kind of stuff, loving their enemies. Glory to God. Doing good and blessing those who curse them and doing good to those who misuse them and praying for them. They are the sons of their father in heaven. That's how to be a son of God. For he makes his son, this is a point now, he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. How can kwa muchawi kunyeshe kwa nini? Kwa muchawi kunanyeshe kwa nini? Na la Sunday muliomba na mkapika kelele akufe mchawi Mungu anasema ngoja kabla hajakufa wacha kwanza kunyeshe kwake kunyeshe mind yake ifanye vizuri na mboga zake when you are busy forming and cursing god is releasing what i call benevolent grace hallelujah somebody say benevolent grace god sends rain to the just and the unjust. This is a unique grace from God. Hallelujah. And because of this grace, I tell you the truth. He will send even the sun to rise on you. Yani jua itachomoka. It doesn't matter what you said or what you did not say. The sun will still come. It will come over Kenya. It will come over a certain region. You know, and then it will rain. Hallelujah. And all that rain and the sun is still coming for good people and bad people. And sometimes, by the way, you know, I know a certain area in Nairobi. Kunanyesha pale, kunanyesha pale, iyo area nakaka kama iko jangwani. Hainyesha ki sana, and I don't know the problem. Yet the people in that place, in fact, atawari mwaga anointing oil to bless their land. But hainyesha ki sana. Because God, you cannot um, twist him. He knows how to release his benevolent grace to everyone because he is just God. Let God be God. Let man be man. And that's why we should bless everyone. Because ukikata kuwabariki, mungu wako baba yako, atambariki na jua. We kata kumbariki, atabariki wa namvua. So be like God. Be like the son of your father. And bless because of the grace of God. Hallelujah. I remember a verse. Matthew. No, not Matthew. But um, Romans 5.8. Romans 5.8. This one was very good when he read it those days. 
But God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Oh my God. He died for who? For all sinners on the earth. Christ died on the cross for everyone. In other words, everyone can access this grace. Even the biggest of the sinners can access this grace. Amen. There's a man we prayed for for 30 years to be saved. He refused to get saved. We prayed, we fasted, we decreed, we declared. One time, I even laid hands on him when I was a small boy and he was taller, you know, uh, believing God that, and he was so drunk. But even then, he went and drank again, you know. But after a few years, something happened and he gave his life to Christ. Today, he's a prophet. He's a prophet of God today. If I mention his name, you will know him. Look at Acts 14, verse 16, about this benevolence grace of God. Acts 14, there's an encounter going on there, verse uh, uh, 16, who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. You see, God in the days past, you know, just allowed nations to do stuff. This is Paul and Barnabas preaching. And verse, the next verse says, Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness. In that he did good, glory to God, gave us rain from heaven, hallelujah. What else did he give us? Fruitful seasons, hallelujah. Filling our hearts with food and gladness. Although those nations were still not following God, but God was generous to still do these things for the nations. This is an aspect of the grace of God. Hallelujah. And that's why I believe. Because of God's grace, no one can just be lost. If somebody just prays on behalf of somebody, comes before God and says, Lord, touch so and so. Lord, reach out to that man. Reach out to that family. Reach out to that couple. Reach out to that teenager. I tell you the truth. This God who does this to nations, he is able to reach out and pour his grace. Hallelujah. Now, God has, having given this benevolent grace, this common grace, this general grace, I don't want to use the word common and general because anything from God is not common. It's just special. Praise God. That's why I'm using the word benevolence. Although uh, <laughs> Paul, writing to Titus, he tells Titus of our common salvation. You know, but the context was at least different though that word was used. Secondly, is the grace we shared in the definition yesterday, what we call the saving grace. God, when he saves us, is actually saving us because of his grace. This is a generous provision of salvation on the cross of Calvary and the securing it by divine intervention. You see, unless God did something, there is no way you would have been saved. No way we would have been saved. I tell you the truth. It was the saving grace of God. Paul, in, in uh, not Paul, but the apostles in Acts 15, in the Jerusalem council, they were speaking and the giving presentations. Peter gave his presentation. Uh, Paul and Barnabas and Titus gave their presentation. And then James gave their presentation when they were discussing, should the Gentiles be circumcised or not? In verse 11 of Acts 15, and verse 11 says, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they, praise God. The Gentiles will also be saved like the Jews. And the Jews will be saved like the Gentiles, praise God. Everyone will have access to the saving grace of God. Are we together? And I'm sure each one of you, as we understand the grace of God, should appreciate the divine encounters that brought you to salvation. You didn't get saved because you are very sharp. We didn't get saved because we later prayed. We were lost. I know I was only nine years. Nine year boy. Nine year boy. Have you ever seen how mothers are manipulated by their little babies? Anadia 
ukula sukari ya wale watoto wengine hizo ni zikwazo dhambi zangu you know those days when we when we were confess when we were getting saved they told us confess and name all your sins one by one don't leave any lest you come and do it later so it was strange i think there was a very limited understanding of salvation but anyway we got saved ukula sukari you know na vitu kama hizo but you know it's the grace of god it's the grace of god because my salvation was because my father got saved and my father was a ddo daily drinking officer the battles they used to fight with my mother were strange now we can testify and rejoice glory to god and you know something happened that happened like in the days of samuel you remember how samuel heard from god a voice spoke to my father and called him and then guess what he walked to the farm almost 100 meters asked my mother did you call me what were you saying then my mother said no me i did not call you he went back went back in the homestead he was called again he walked again and asked my mother did you call me i thought you called me my mother said i didn't call you then at that time my mother told him something almost like prophetic go back and listen to the voice to know which direction it's coming from <laughs> and my mother had never been to school she's never been to school we even don't know her date of uh, of birth we don't have birthday she's generally a kenyan glory to god <laughs> and we bless god for her but we assume she is 86 because my father is 92 although she could be younger because those days okay wajani achana na hiyo maneno is almost child abuse sorry i mean <laughs> let me be careful my wife is here you know she's she's the one and the bergaga who are saying ati nini ulikuwa unasema so let me be very careful glory to god so how can this voice come from heaven to look for a normal kenyan heathen this is the grace of god this is the grace of god then he had a dream after that The dream was that he saw heaven. In fact, he was taken up to heaven. He entered before he got saved. How can you enter heaven and we are not saved? At least he entered through a dream. It was the grace of God. He went akaonyeshwa vile kuzuri nini nini. When he woke up, it changed his mind. And then in that same dream he was told, follow this road. The first church you find, join. I hope your church back in the village or wherever it is has a sign post. God is still using sign post. Are we together? But to put a nice name that can lead somebody to salvation. Not devil weeping ministries, you know, because akiona jina devil hata ingia. Kenyans need help. Weka jina mzuri. Amen. So anyway, he on a Sunday morning walked almost 3 kilometers and he found a sign post. Wow. He followed the sign post. And found a church and you entered this church thank god it was a church that were preaching salvation glory to god and there was an old man who was ordained as a pastor in 1936 he was a bishop you know paul he was a great man that man when we got to know him he amazed us he's the one who was a the bishop he was archbishop it was the only i think branch but he was the archbishop you know walikuwa they had that independence uh, mentality hii kanisa ni ya mzungu na ni bendera ya mzungu we need our own african bendera those were the kind of church but the man was preaching salvation thank god for him in fact when he died in 92 there was another quick in the village a tremor a general had died wengine wanakufa tu na kitu inaendelea kawaida lakini kuna there are some people they cause another quick i pray you and i one day there shall be another quick when we leave glory to god so it was the grace of god that brought him to salvation and i tell you he received the gift of an evangelist and he began to preach 
but one month later they came home to follow up to see mzee anaendeleaje ameokoka anaendeleaje aliacha pombe and as they are doing that and there was some little singing and some little fellowship and this preacher said oh, you know who want to give their life to christ my mother went forward glory to god pastor Gigi went forward hallelujah the preacher said somebody else me i, I had no reason to be saved nikaona huyu mtu jiji tunafanya tuna fight na ye. we were in the same class in standard 2 we are doing everything together so whatever he has done is good for me so i went and prayed and also got saved praise god and it looked it worked it worked praise god you also have your story how you got saved let me ask a question in the lunch hour a quick survey how many people got saved uh, in a gospel crusade a preacher was preaching out there and they made an altar call and you gave your love to let me see lift your hand okay three people four people five people god bless you how many people got saved in a church service sunday morning the pastor was preaching or whoever was preaching you got saved in church let me see ah yeah so we don't pastor mark every time we preach tell people to be saved that's good how many people got saved because somebody witnessed to you one-on-one -on -one, talked to you convinced you prayed for you whatever they prayed for you one-on-one -on -one. let me see that's still good that's still a good number all right how many people got saved alone you just felt a conviction and either you nailed down or you declared I'm saved, we end up to Kutangaza Badai. Let me see. They are there. They are there. How are they? are there. These are the results of our prayers. Lift your hand again. These are the results of our prayers. Glory to God. All those encounters, whether a preacher was sent or an angel from heaven, it was the saving grace of God. God acted and moved his spirit, drew you to the Father, and you were saved. May that grace be multiplied so that everybody in your family can also be saved. This house has a family anointing. I declare people who are hard nuts to crack in your family in this season of grace. I declare everybody be saved in your family. You shall be saved with your house. Glory to God. Receive that right now. And all those that are watching in Jesus name. Everybody in your family is coming to Christ. In the name of Jesus. Because of this grace. The saving grace. When Jesus died on the cross. And shed his blood. Was nailed on that place. It was an act of grace. It was an act that de 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 declared. All the things that God wanted. For humanity. And as many as believed. Look at them today. They are in the lunch hour. Look at them today. They are in the lunch hour. Hallelujah. And we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God to everyone who believes. To the Jews first and also to the Greeks. Hallelujah. For in this gospel is the righteousness of God established from faith to faith. Hallelujah. It's a saving grace. It's a saving grace. But there's another aspect of God's grace would call securing grace securing grace this is a manifestation of god's grace by which we believers and we christians are kept secure in spite of sin in spite of our weaknesses and failures that we experience we are secured by god just like a lost man cannot obtain salvation through any good work of his own. Neither can a believer or a Christian maintain his salvation by doing works. Salvation is obtained and maintained by the grace of God alone. Hallelujah. That maintaining grace, grace that maintains us, grace that secures us, this is actually the grace of from God. Romans 5 verse 1 and 2 describes something and also 1 Peter 5 verse 12. But let's begin with Romans 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus. He's the greatest carrier of grace, the dispenser of grace. Verse 2 through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. There is this grace. Somebody say this grace. 
We are here right now by faith. We are here because of grace. Hallelujah. The grace saved us, but we are here now also by what? By grace. Verse 1, having been justified, that's an act of salvation. And then having been justified by faith, then we now access this grace. This access is also an act of grace. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 5. Verse 12 says, By Silvanus, our faithful brother, as I consider him, I have written to you briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God in which you stand. Hallelujah. Peter is writing to the church in the diaspora. The people were scattered out of persecution that took place in Jerusalem. Believers went to Kapendokia, others went to Galatia, others went to other places, Mesia and Asia. And it's not like Paul who writes to Corinth, who writes to Gal Galatia, to Colos Colossi or Thessalonica. Peter writes to everyone. And he's telling them that, you know, exhorting them or encouraging them, helping them to draw near to God. In his writings, he is also giving testimonies that those who preached, preached with the Holy Ghost from heaven. Ah, these are the testimonies he's giving to secure them, to help them understand that we stand where we stand now by this true grace of God. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, that's why you don't need to be afraid and say, oh, maybe by the next 10 years, I'm not sure whether I'll even be standing in Christ. I don't know whether I'll still be born again. No, 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 no. There's nothing like that. God is on your side. His grace will maintain you, will secure you in Jesus' name, and you shall make it in the name of the Lord. Because you don't keep yourself. We are kept by God. Hallelujah. If we were exposed just a little bit, from the attacks of the enemy, we would be destroyed by now. Would have been eaten alive, like the psalmists say. But look, we are still here. What good did we do? It's a grace of God. Hallelujah. This grace also helps us to uh, grow. Uh, it's another type of grace, number four. We would call it sanctifying grace. It sanctifies us. This is a grace which works within the true believer, works within us to bring growth to bring maturity, to bring progress in the process of becoming Christ-like. You see, we are supposed to be growing. We are supposed to be coming like, becoming like Christ. We're supposed to be growing, maturing. We're supposed to be moving ahead. We're supposed to be advancing. Let me tell you, we don't advance just by nothing and for nothing. It is the grace of God that sets us apart. Wherever we meet a junction and make, need to make a decision, at that point, the grace of God helps us to make the right decision and it sets us apart to still continue with the journey. To still continue with the journey. Let, let's see what the Bible says and then we can pick this tomorrow. Acts chapter 13, verse 43. Acts chapter 13, uh, part of the ministry of the apostles, I mean, especially Paul and Barnabas, verse 43 says, Now when their congregation had broken up, Many of the Jews and the devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. You see, here Paul, in this missionary journey, together with Barnabas, they kept strengthening the churches. They went encouraging them. They went speaking to them. They went saying, look, be encouraged. Glory to God. Continue in the grace of God. In other words, there is something that is going to help you as a believer from the inside of you, to grow, to progress, to advance, to sanctify you. Glory to God. So that you will be found standing in God. Amen. Continue the grace of God. There's an aspect of ministry that some leaders need to understand. And those of us who preach. Not every time you travel, you should travel going preaching. Just travel to encourage people. Yeah, I've done it several times where we have areas, we have group of churches that are connected with us. Sometime we drive and just go to meet the pastor and just see how he's doing and his wife and just make a prayer with him and tell him to continue in the grace of God. Go to the next city 
and tell him, man of God, we just came to see you and check on how you are doing and tell you, God is still with you. Don't be afraid. Keep sowing the seeds of the gospel and may you continue in the grace of God. That's powerful than anything you can imagine. Don't just think of a convention. Think about just going to encourage. And this happened to me when, when a, a spiritual leader, John Ali, did something that shook me in 2004. You know, they said, okay, I'm sending Lloyd Gill and another brother. And uh, they're coming in the next, you know, one month or so. They're going to be in Nairobi and they're coming to meet you. Then I wrote to them. I said, look, can we organize a seminar? You know, the men of God are coming. Let's organize a seminar so that the men of God can come and teach something. They told me, no, 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 don't organize no seminar. We're just coming to spend time with you. All the way from Australia to spend time with me. Wow. They changed religious thinking. This is apostolic Christianity. It's more relational than anything else. If we build connections, we'll have more impact than just always teaching and preaching. Amen? Well, it's only that we don't have all the time to keep visiting. But I pray may you be visited. No, no, no. Let me put it the other way. May you visit somebody. Amen. Visit somebody. Praise God. So, so seeds of visits, then you shall be visited. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 15 verse 10. This is a grace which works in us as believers in such a way to bring growth inside of us, to mature us. The Bible says, by the grace of God, Paul testifies, I am whom I am, what I am. And by his, and, and his grace towards me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, this labor that I was putting in, it's not I. But the grace of God which was with me. There is grace with you. Helping you from inside of you to continue. Hallelujah. So, this is a sanctifying grace. It sets you apart to keep going. And finally, 2 Peter 3.18. We'll do the rest of the stuff tomorrow. 2 Peter 3.18, the Bible says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forevermore. Grow in the grace of God. There is something that is going to happen even this week as we're speaking the word of God. Your confidence, your inner confidence out of your relationship with God will grow. You will be more secure. You will be more confident as you pray. You'll be more confident as you serve the Lord. Because you know it is not your weakness. It's not you. Yeah. You know, many times I pray these kind of prayers. You know, like today, I say, Lord, I'm not just going to preach because I know this or that. No, I need your grace. I need help so that every word I speak can minister to somebody. It is this grace of God. And guess what? It will grow. Yeah, it will grow. I'm sure by next year, the lunch hours of next year, we will be preaching better. Pastor Mark will be preaching better. This man of God, Anthony Casilli, you need to come and preach here. You know, you'll be preaching better. You know, Pastor Ben, God bless you with all your five points, four points, three points. You'll be having 20 points. Glory to God. May the grace of God grow inside of us. This is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. God bless you. We're going to pray. So stand up on your feet.